Hey, how's it going, dear surfers? Today, we've got yet another awesome video by Ratchets and Wrenches. And by that I mean today I'm going to show you how you can properly apply paint and clear coat to your stock brake calipers. In other words, I'm going to show you how you can turn this into this. So I'm going to be showing you how to do this on this 2013 Hyundai Elantra hatchback, but of course the procedures in this video can be applied to any car. And I am planning on painting all the calipers on this car this nice bright red color. And I believe it will be a good color combination with the black paint that's on the car. Now in order for your brake caliper paint job to be a long lasting one, it's very important that you pay close attention and not skip any of the steps that are going to be in this video. But not just that, it's also important that you use the correct material as well. And as always, if you're interested in any of the tools or products I use in my videos, I'll put links to where you can buy them for cheap online down below in the description box. So don't be afraid to click on them and check them out. All right, so the first step goes without saying is to raise and support the car on jack stands. And keep in mind, if you're going to be doing all the calipers at the same time, you're going to need four jack stands. And next, with all four wheels off the ground, we're going to remove our wheels. All right, so here's a closer look at our front driver's side brake caliper. So next, in order to have easier access to the bolts in the back that are holding our brake caliper and brake caliper bracket in, we're going to get in our car, unlock our steering wheel, and turn it all the way to the left. All righty, so first thing we're going to remove is going to be this brake line. So next, you want to grab yourself a pair of locking needle nose pliers, and then using a rag, you want to pinch your brake line like this. I do this so that I don't lose all the brake fluid that's in this line, but also this will make bleeding the brakes a lot easier when it's time to put these back together. Next we'll grab a bucket and put it underneath our caliper. And then using an RNW brand ratcheting wrench, we're going to undo our brake line bolt. And then remove it. Make sure you don't lose any of the washers that might come flying out. All right, next grab yourself a screwdriver and then we'll put our screwdriver inside our caliper like this. And we're gonna use this to push the rotor against the piston inside here. And we wanna bottom out the piston inside here. That way we get rid of the brake fluid that's inside here. And this is gonna make masking and then painting our brake caliper easier later on as well. And next we'll remove our upper and lower brake caliper bolts. Here's the upper one. Here's the lower one. And here's our brake caliper. So here's a look at our brake caliper and as you can see, our brake piston is pretty much bottomed out. Oh, and look, there's another copper washer on the brake caliper. Make sure you don't lose these. And next, we're removing our brake pads. Just make sure if you're going to be re reusing your brake pads to put them in the same exact location. If you get them switched around, you might have premature uh, brake pad and or brake rotor wear. And next, we'll remove the upper and lower bolts for our brake caliper mounting bracket. Here's the upper one. And here's the lower one, and here comes our bracket. All right, now with our caliper and bracket out of the car, we're gonna get started on cleaning it, but first, we're gonna actually remove all our brake hardware. So that means we're gonna have to remove our brake slide pins and the boot. Next, we'll remove these brackets that are for our brake pads. And then on the caliper side, we'll remove this rubber dust boot for our bleeder screw, but we'll leave the bleeder screw in there. All right, now before we can start washing our calipers, we need to find a way to plug up where the bolt hole for our brake line is. Otherwise water will get in there and we don't want that. And the other problem is that we cannot use the bolt that holds in our brake line. Because as you can see, this bolt has a hole that goes through it. So what you wanna do is to go to your local auto parts store and get the same size bolt. This one being an M10 by 1.0 by 20 millimeters. And if you're wondering, M10 stands for the diameter of the bolt, and the 1.0 is the thread pitch, or the thread size on the bolt, and 20 millimeter is the length of the bolt. And I found that this is a common size for the bolt that holds in the brake line. However, on yours, it might be different. So next, all we have to do is just simply screw this in all the way. All right, next, grab yourself a bucket, throw your brake caliper in there, and then grab yourself a can of brake clean, and then by using a brush, preferably a wire brush, you basically want to go to town and remove all big chunks of dirt, debris, and grease that could be on your brake caliper or its bracket. But with a wire brush, you want to be careful around the rubber boot around your piston because you don't want to damage that. All right, next, after thoroughly cleaning them, it's time to sand them down. And preferably, you want to sand them down to bare metal because that's the best surface for this caliper paint to stick to. 
Now normally your stock calipers are gonna look something like this. They don't have a coating, but they have a thin layer of uh, surface rust on them which you need to clean off. But in the case of this Elantra, this caliper seems to have a powder coating of some kind on it. That's to work as a rust inhibitor, but we're going to have to completely remove that and expose bare metal before we can start spraying. Now if you have access to an air compressor, you can use an air angle grinder with an abrasive pad at the end to do this. But if you don't have one of these, you can use an electrical Dremel tool like this with the wire wheel at the end of it. Also, if you don't have either of those tools, you can always use some 220 or 320 grit sandpaper, but you will simply not be able to get them to bare metal. Now, since I have both of these tools, I'm gonna to use them both in combination with one another. But again, make no mistake about it, doesn't matter which caliper you're working on, in order to get to bare metal, you're gonna to have to spend a lot of time and energy and for that, you're gonna need a lot of elbow grease. Again, for those of you that don't know what elbow grease is, I'll put a link down below in the description box so you can check it out. And once again, while using either one of these tools, you wanna to make sure you stay away from this rubber boot inside your caliper. You wanna make sure you don't damage that. But before you start, you're gonna need some eye and lung protection. All right, so we're pretty much done with the top of this caliper, but since the coating that was in here was silver, it's gonna be hard to tell the difference. But anyway, here on the side, this is how it looked like before, and this is what the top looks like down to bare metal, pretty much. And here's how it will look like if you're doing it on some old rusty calipers. You can see the difference a lot better on this. Now, if you're doing this on some super old and rusty calipers, then realistically, you're not going to be able to get all of the rust stuff and get to bare metal, but just do the best you can. All right, next I'm going to finish this set, then go on to the other three remaining calipers we have. So basically, I'll see you guys in a couple of hours. And eh, actually, screw it, I'll see you guys tomorrow. All right, folks, it's actually the next day and it took me about two or three hours of uh, grinding these down to get them down to pretty much bare metal. Oh, and by the way, this little furball in the background, there's my new dog. If you guys are wondering, this good looking fella is half bull mastiff, half rottweiler, and half butthead. And you'll be seeing a lot of him because that's he's gonna be hanging out in that corner while I shoot videos. So yep, there he is. Butthead. And after we grind these down, it's time for yet another brake clean bath. All right, and before we start spraying, we need to mask off a couple areas. First, our bleeder screw. Next, you want to mask around your piston, including the rubber boot, and also you want to make sure that no paint can sneak past the rubber boot to the inside of your caliper. Also on the bracket side, I like to mask up uh, the holes where the sliding pins go. There's probably still some grease in there, and I want that to ruin our paint job. All right, next we're ready to start spraying our paint. And no, we're not gonna spray primer first, because the paint I'm using sticks to bare metal just as good as it would stick to primer. And make sure you use paint that's specifically made for calipers because they're highly resistant to the extreme temperatures that's produced at your calipers. Next, we'll grab our can and shake it for a full minute. Next, it's a good idea to find something and put it underneath our caliper so that it's off the ground. And I find that an empty brake clean bottle will do the trick just fine. And next, we're ready to start spraying. You just want to make sure you go very light on your first two coats. All right, 10 minutes later and it's time for our second coat. And I'm actually gonna try to put this on light this time. Oh yeah, it's starting to look better already. And now we put on our third and final coat. And here's how things look after our third and final coat of paint. All right, so next I'm just gonna wait about 40 minutes before I spray the clear coat. So 40 minutes later, here's how our paint looks. It's dry to the touch, and it's pretty shiny as it is, but we're still gonna spray some clear coat on it. So we'll grab our clear coat and shake it for a full minute. And when spraying clear coat, it's even more important that you put on the first few coats light. Otherwise, you could get runs, which could ruin your paint job.
Ten minutes later, it's time for our second quote. And our third and final quote. All right, so here's how it looks like after applying our third coat of clear. But we are not yet done with this paint job. And we're not done because in order to make sure that this paint lasts, we need to make sure that this paint is cured before we put this caliper back on the car and go for a drive. And in order to make sure that this paint is cured, we need to bake it. But before I show you how to do that, here's how the caliper looks with the clear coat on, and here's how it looks like without clear coat on. Now I'm not sure how well you guys are gonna be able to tell, but as one would expect, the one with clear coat on is a bit more shinier. Also the color looks a bit deeper, and it also makes it look like as if the paint went on more even as well. All right, now as far as how you can bake the paint on these calipers, well first, you're going to have to wait at least three hours, or better yet, leave them sitting overnight. And next, you're going to need an oven. Then you're going to need to preheat said oven to 200 degrees Fahrenheit. The next step is to put everything on a cookie sheet and throw them in the oven, and then let them bake in the oven for exactly one hour. And next, after they cool down, you can grab them and then reinstall them back on the car. Now, I'm not gonna bore you with the reinstallation and the bleeding process of the brakes. I'm gonna assume most people know how to do that. So I'm just gonna put these on and the next shot you'll see is gonna be the after shot. All right, so here's how this caliper looks installed back on the car. And here's how it looks like with the wheel back on. And here's how it looks like when the wheel is spinning. Nice. And that's it, hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, do me a favor and share this video on your favorite social network. And also consider checking out these other related videos of which I put links to on this side of the screen that you can click on. There will also be links down below in the description box as well. All right, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.